All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the channel, to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones. Thanks for being here and uh, taking time out of your schedules. Uh, so we are at the Publix parking lot. Uh, this is one of my favorite places in the world, okay? I come here for lunch all the time, grab a Publix sub, eat it right here in my truck, then go back home, get back to work. Um, I just, I absolutely love everything about Publix where shopping is a pleasure. So we are actually here on a grocery store run um, to get uh, some breakfast items and some things like that for the house. While I'm here, I'm gonna grab a pack of crayons. Old school crayons like we all played with when we were kids and see if we can turn that into a bait. You know, crayons are, I'm, I'm assuming, mostly made out of wax. They may have a bunch of different stuff in them now, you know, modern crayons, but I'm thinking they should be able to melt into plastic color the plastic but some questions arise I have some questions about how this can work and if it will work so we're gonna find out well I think we've turned over a new leaf I actually told my wife that she could keep doing laundry while we were filming today so maybe we are making progress but I doubt it all right there they are Crayola crayons. Now, uh, my my first question: Did anyone else other than me ever call these crowns? Like, hey, mommy, where's the box of crowns? For some reason, I could never say crayons. It was crowns. So we have our box of crowns here, and look at all these beautiful colors that we can play with here. So, oh my God, the laundry! Ah, oh, I just have to take a deep breath meet y'all back so i wanted to show y'all some recent hand pouring in the in a 10 inch ribbon tail worm uh, these are the new ones here these are older but it's just kind of a cool spread some patterns that you don't normally see in worms because you don't see too many people hand pouring individual worms it's very time consuming and at the end of the day all you get out of it is a worm but oh man it's so cool just the ability or, or not even the ability, but just what a what a hand pour worm mold allows you to do in terms of pouring patterns, you know? So you can take some of your concepts um, with your swim bait pouring, right? And turn it into a worm. Okay, so we went ahead and just uh, took the black one and we got the uh, paper off of it, of course. Now, immediately, you know, just some of my initial questions are, Okay, this is wax. I'm pretty sure this is made out of wax. Wax melts, light any candle, and you can see the wax start to melt, and it becomes a liquid. So, I'm confident that it will melt into the plastic and leave behind some pigment. But, as you can see, this crayon is not flexible. Wax is not flexible. So, once we run the baits and they set up, does the bait become firm and brittle? because of the wax? I don't know. These are all things we're going to find out. And this video might be a complete failure. We might not get a workable bait. This might not work at all. We're still gonna make a video out of it even if we simply just cannot use them. So, I don't know, fun experiment. All right, we're gonna go with some jerkbait plastic today, a nice medium durometer. Uh, because, you know, there again, I have no idea how this is going to go. I don't know, like, if we can get the crayons to properly melt into the plastic and color it, uh, pigment the plastic. I don't, I don't really know what baits I'm going to use, um, or excuse me, what molds I'm going to use. So we're just going to go with the everything durometer, swim bait, jerk bait blend. Pretty much works for anything. All right, plastic going in the microwave. We're going to do two minutes. Two minutes, well worth it. Can any of you 90s babies uh, tell me what movie that quote's from? Two minutes, well worth it. I know one guy will, Big Bird. All right, so we have some plastic. It's very hot. We're just going to drop some in and see what happens. Now, I thought about just kind of shaving it into, into small shavings. Just maybe use a knife or grind it down to help it uh, melt. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. Sorry, I uh, I nuked this plastic very quickly, and uh, 
obviously I'm gonna have to put it in the vac. That's not awful. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. And I'll tell you, I don't think it's going to add a ton of bubbles by itself. Okay, so we already kind of have a nice charcoal. You know, I'm curious how this will melt in the microwave though. Yeah, you can see we still have a large solid chunk of it there, but it's actually melting very quickly. That's that's actually so far this is actually doing really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stir the rest of it in. And then I kind of want to drizzle some out and let that set up to see if that wax makes it firm. It, uh, you know, I, now that wasn't a whole lot of this crayon to begin with. So it might not have any effect whatsoever uh, on the actual physical properties of the plastisol. All right, so we're actually gonna use the same open pore worm mold from the worms that we were showing you earlier. And uh, I'm still kind of working through some of these dead on flakes. So here's something that I would not normally ever even think to use, but we're gonna use it. We're gonna put it in this crayon black plastic and just see what happens here. This is sort of like a hologram orange flake. Ooh, that is pretty. That is super pretty. You know, we're just kind of having fun with some new, with some new ideas. Yeah, just a little bit more. That's that's now our smidge. That's today's smidge measurement. Is like you know a half inch of crayon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Super fun mold to pour, but it's also challenging because it's so thin. As you can see, I'm resting my cup on the table and almost pushing the mold forward, you know, until you get back here and then you kind of have to, kind of have to just deal with it and pour the tail. But you can use the leverage of the table to your advantage. And that right there is a clean pour. In fact, I don't think I can do it better. So it's all downhill from here. I guarantee you this next one won't be quite that clean. Screw it up somewhere along the way. But yeah, nice little solid color worm here. And I would have never guessed that I could get wax crayons to perform this well as a pigment base. You know, I thought the, I thought the wax would have trouble melting or it would, um, you know, make, make the baits stiff and brittle, you know, because think about whenever you blow out a candle, the wax gets hard again. So the wax might be, you know, workable now, but you would think once these baits set up that they're gonna, you know, be stiff, which is, you know, sort of beside the point of a soft plastic lure. So far, we're looking and feeling pretty good. Okay, so we actually have all of the molds poured and let's take one out. Okay, so far they feel good. Um, in terms of still being a pliable, stretchy plastic bait. So I am actually really satisfied with this. I'm not wild about the color. I love that flake. I'm not sure that it works well in a black base like that. I don't know. That's, that's kind of one of those flakes that, you know, a hologram kind of color shift, bright orange. I just don't have much experience using sort of bright fluorescent color flakes. So that's something that I need to do more of so that I can get experience with it. That way we can use it to its full potential. You know, and, and stuff like that can also be used as like clear dip. You know, put that in your clear dip plastic. You know, use it as like a scaling coat. So if you don't put it in your plastic all the time, there are still ways to use exotic flakes uh, to your advantage. So anyway, yeah, we'll just grab the rest of these real quick. So far, I don't know, I, I'm kind of like it. It's, it's growing on me. What do y'all think? Look at that. That was a crayon in a box 15 minutes ago. So let's just keep that in mind because this is pretty wild. Oops, hit the camera. Yep, 
That was a, that was a, a, a black crayon just a few minutes ago. Crazy when stuff works. Okay, welcome back. So the black with the orange hologram flake was absolutely a total success. I am over the moon with how well this works. So now we're gonna take it up a level. Now we're actually going to blend some color together. We're gonna try to make an actual bass fishing color, right? A very popular color. We're gonna try to use crayons to make a laminate in Okeechobee Crawl. So a blue side and then sort of a green pumpkin side. So for the blue, I think we can get away with just the regular blue. For the green pumpkin side, we're gonna blend green and brown to try to get sort of that brownish green like a green pumpkin. Add a little black flake and voila. Let's see if we can do it. This will be a challenge. We're not gonna use any regular uh, pigment or any real supplies for bait making. We're just gonna see if we can do it just with crayons. All right, let's take the blue. We'll try that. We'll see if that's enough. And then for the green pumpkin side, we'll do some green, of course, and then some brown, a little bit of brown. Yeah, that's our, that's our smidge for the day. And just cut off a little bit of brown. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're actually going to blend a little bit of black into it just because I know we'll probably want this to be darkened up just a little bit. So sort of like we would try to blend colors with real actual pigments. Uh, you know, the, the whole goal is to build the color to taste. Yeah, look at that. Yep, I do think we'll need some more blue. Well, I don't know. There's still a chunk of it left, so that might thicken up a little bit. Let's see how this is going to look. Oh, this could actually work. It definitely needs to be browned. There's definitely too much green. Let's see if there's a darker brown. We may have missed, we may have missed one. I don't see it. I do not see a dark brown. There's like a gray and several shades of purple. So we'll put some more of that in there and then maybe darken it just a little bit. Now there's a lot more pigment in the green side, which means we are going to thicken up the blue side just so that we can try to match the saturation on each side. All right, so we went ahead and stirred in uh, some black flake. And now we're just gonna kind of do the drizzle test. Okay. And would you look at that? Is it perfect? No. But that might actually work. It's not gonna look as good as if it was real pigment, but hey, that ain't too bad. You know, I have to say, I'm feeling really good about this. I think the colors are actually gonna look pretty good together. Um, so now it's just kind of up to getting a, a nice even laminate and I think the plastic is about done so yeah looking good let's lock and load Y'all, I think this is gonna work. Let's check it out. Yeah, y'all see that where uh, the, the, the colors just kind of blended when you remove the uh, blending block from the mold? That really, really has a very authentic Okeechobee Craw uh, look to it. Uh, it kind of, where it blends, it kind of creates a few aqua greens and aqua blues. That's how I like mine to be at least. So I think this actually has pretty good potential. All right, now let's see how the blending block looks. I know a lot of people like to see see the inside. Oh yeah. Y'all, that's really not bad. Our green pumpkin actually came out very green pumpkin. So I'm pretty thrilled there. Like honestly, any soft plastic bait makers out there, go raid the kitchen cabinets or your uh, son or daughter's school supplies and sneak a few crayons 
out to your shop. I think you will really enjoy this. I'm sure I'm not the first person to do it, but uh, if you have not done this before, I'm having a really fun time with this. All right, here we go. Ecto Craw, we're gonna drum on these for a reveal. Here we go. Oh, no way. No way. No way it worked. Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> You know, and, and what's funny is that this is actually what I would consider a little too saturated. Like, I almost got too much crayon, crown pigment in there. Look at this. That is really, really good, though. Let's take the middle one out. We'll flip it. Yeah, look at that. If I posted these on the Instagram and said, hey guys, we uh, you know ran a, a new recipe of Okeechobee Craw today. Would any of y'all think that this was made from this? Like, that's real. You saw it here. Wow. All right, now I'm very confident in these other molds. These are all molds that we've seen a lot on this channel, but when it comes to a natural laminate color, they really, really show off uh, the, the color well. Yeah, that is spectacular. Y'all, I literally bought these crayons at Publix like today. And these are hot. Paris Hilton would approve. Because that right there is hot. All right. Oh, coming out on that side. Look, look, look. <laughs> Those are crayons. Oh my lord. Uh, you know that moment when you realize that it took playing around with crayons to make your best Okeechobee Craw ever? Like this honestly rivals how I would normally make it. Like this this right here looks like Lureworks Green Pumpkin 109 and their Thalo Blue. This is, this this should not be happening. What do y'all think? That is intensely good. I don't know if I could top this today. I, I mean, I'm sure we'll do one more color, but I honestly don't think I'm gonna top that. That actually turned out way better than those worms. Wow, what should we do next? All right, this last color is gonna be a golden oldie. Bubblegum. We're just gonna do straight pink. This is carnation pink. To me, it looks like a good bubblegum color which you commonly see in like a finesse worm, like I think Zoom makes their trick worm in bubble gum. Uh, some other floating worms out there are just straight pink, which uh, always looks good in just about anything and catches fish. It's not a novelty color. Yeah, I think we're gonna need a lot more of that carnation pink. I don't know, it's, it's starting to stir in. Still really light though. Very pretty. Yep, we're gonna use some more. So we are going to keep adding. Where's the uh, paper seam? There it is. Yeah, gotta keep peeling away this paper. I forgot how aggravating this is. I haven't done this since I was a kid. Should I get all this paper off? There we go. Yeah, we're really gonna add a bunch. All right, so we wound up using that entire crayon uh, for the pink, the carnation pink. So that is by far the most amount of wax we've put into a single cup of Plastisol. Uh, so we're gonna run some uh, various stuff. We got some tubes, some various worms, and we'll see if the plastic still feels correct, if you know what I mean. All right, let's take a look at these tubes. Yeah, guess what, they're pink. Shocking, I know. Yeah, super cool. I always love the tubes. They, they, 
they look like a popsicle or something. Popsicle on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That was a pink carnation crayon five minutes ago. So what we'll do is we're going to take all the tubes out and, uh, and then we'll cut the tails. That way we get the proper effect. All right, I believe this is the kicker worm. Yep. Yep, the angling AI kicker worm. And uh, you know, I haven't featured this mold on the channel in a while, but uh, it basically has a tail that when you bust it apart has two parts to it that kick. It almost looks like that. It literally looks like somebody kicking. Uh, really, really great action, catches a lot of big fish, and I thought it was a good candidate for just a solid color. Sort of like you would see a solid pink trick worm or a speed worm. Here's a solid pink kicker worm. Really, really cool design. One of Josh's first molds, I believe, actually. And then the mid mag. Because you cannot do a solid pink color. Oh, I didn't fill that one out enough. Can't do a solid pink color without some sort of finesse worm. Oh, yeah, I think I was running out of plastic just slightly when I hit this mold. It happens from time to time. Beautiful colors though. Guys, crayons. This is amazing. All right, now we're just gonna cut a few of these uh, tube mold tails. Tube tails here. This is like the four inch angling AI tube mold and the tail cutter. Just like that. Done. Check it out. The crayon tube. All right, now we're gonna see if there's an amount of crayon wax in plastic that will cause the plastic to basically set up and be stiff like a crayon. So that's four entire crayons in three quarters of a cup of Plastisol. <laughs> hey, it's very patriotic already, red, white, and blue. So anyway, we're just gonna, yeah, this is gonna be fugly but it's gonna be a pretty large, uh, I, I guess, ratio of, of um, <laughs> wax to plastic. All right, so I just kinda quickly grabbed a mold and poured some plastic from that cup, and that was like four and a half crayons. And you know, it still feels fine. Maybe a little dry because of all the wax that's in it. But, you know, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised because realistically, if you do actually want to use crayons <laughs> as your pigment base making some soft plastic lures, chances are you're never going to put that much into a single cup of plastic. So I think you're probably safe. You know, because that was, that was one of my kind of main questions was at what point does this start to get more firm and brittle because of the wax to plastic ratio. And really, it seems like you have to really put way too many into a cup of plastic to really affect things. All right, there's the spread. And I cannot believe how well this worked. Most of the time when I put something crazy in the plastic, generally I can get something out of it, but you know, normally it'll burn easy. It creates a ton of bubbles. Um, I didn't have any of those problems. Not only did the, did the uh, crayons not create moisture bubbles or anything like that, they were able to withstand multiple reheats in the microwave. None of the color faded out. It didn't make it burn. It makes them maybe feel a little bit drier. Um, but other than that, there's like no change whatsoever. They actually smell like crayons a little bit. Well, it's not an exact color match, but this is sort of like a green pumpkin bluegill chatterbait so put that okeechobee craw on the back there yeah it looks a little better actually from the from the green side yeah so there's just sort of like a practical example of you know a crayon bait rigged up okay everybody it is so hot in here it's ridiculous so uh, i'm looking forward to wrapping this video up getting inside cooling off a little bit and uh going about the rest of my day so um wow I did not see that coming, you know, whenever I decided to do the crayons, and I'm pretty sure this has been suggested before, 
um, through you know just some comments on the channel hey try crayons so somebody out there has probably probably put this in my head a long time ago so thank you to whoever you are but I did not see this working this well and I'm curious whenever y'all saw this thumbnail and decided to watch the video did you think that they were gonna work that well or were you like ah wax candle they're gonna be stiff and brittle that's what I thought um, for some reason I, I guess it just takes a, a insane amount of wax a lot of crayons to, to really change your plastic so as long as you're just doing it the way that we were doing it today I think it makes a good bait so super fun I, I love trying dumb things like this when actually they work out well and then they're not so dumb anymore so anyway yeah take some crayons go make some baits have fun thank you guys so much for watching this video hope you found it uh, enjoyable like subscribe comment down below all that good stuff notification bell we will see y'all in the next video.